Jason has a curious question that I, if, if it's asked exactly the way it appears here, mm -hmm. I think is instantly self-refuting. And I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to read this Jason. And then you see if you tell me why I think this is self-refuting. Jason says, if there's no referee, then can there be anything that resembles objective morality? What is the role of a, a referee, Jason? Well, the referee basically says, hey, you're playing by the rules or you're not playing by the rules. But isn't that a brain, a referee? An agent? Yeah. And, and isn't that agent then offering their subjective assessment? Well, I guess unless it's, you know, completely obvious that they, that someone's cheating, I guess you no. could say it was subjective. No, it's totally, I've been a referee. I was a soccer referee for years. And let me tell you, <laughs> it's that a lot of it is subjective. If you're a soccer referee, sometimes offside calls, especially if you're a lines person are incredibly subjective. You just have to make a call. You maybe might, you may be wrong. Yeah. An objective assessment is one that is non-subjective. So if you have someone, some agent making a decision, now it's subjective. And the rules exist irrespective of you as well. So the only way you could have, the only way you could have objective morality is if in fact there was no referee, but a, 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 a rule that is indisputable, uh, unequivocal, not subject to interpretation or debate or discussion. Right. And so it, if God does exist and if God is omnipotent, uh, omniscient, then God would be, or at least could be a source of objective morality. No, he couldn't. Because God has opinions about morality, right? Right. Now, now that's not to say that it wouldn't be arbitrary, because, you know, if God is whatever people are saying God is, then it seems to me that God could think up any moral code and adhere to it, and then say that we would have to adhere to that moral code. But yes, but th that's just divine is, command theory, which makes it, it, is, it that is. divine command theory is completely subjective. Yeah, that just substitutes the any meaning that I have grounded, like in the word morality, would disappear at that point in time because it would just be morality would just be synonymous with God's opinion at that at that point. Um, and morality means something different than that, like definitionally. Like definitionally, when you look at morality, it doesn't mean God's opinion. It means you know striving to do good things to reduce harm to increase thriving like there's lots of different ways that you can look at it but ultimately the definitions fall in and around those concepts so if you're saying that god is the grounding of god could be the grounding of morality then the meaning of morality just just starts to become fleeting and it's just that god's opinion equals what we should do because god's opinion opinion by the definition of the word morality and the concept that we understand it um, could be that we should all hurt each other. He could just change his mind one day if it's subjective and decide that we should all hurt each other uh, as a matter of imperative because that's his opinion. But I don't think that you would say that that's moral because your understanding of morality isn't grounded in God. It's grounded in an understanding of the concept. Right. And, and I guess that's where I'm at. My, you know, I've been beating this existential crap around for 52 years and mm -hmm. i guess i'm finally coming around to the realization that uh, i am in fact an atheist but the reason well i've been holding on um to you know some kind of belief in something beyond human beings is exactly that is because if there is nothing above human beings, then every human being is the captain of their own ship. And every human being can then equivalently define morality for themselves. Okay, Jason, I, I gave a lecture a long time ago, which you can find online called The Superiority of Secular Morality. So first of all, if you're wanting to hang on to a God concept because you want there to be objective morality, um, 
a God concept flies in the face of objective morality. It is the ultimate subjective morality if God is the source and ultimate arbiter. So the only way to have objective morality is to have a system where there's not a God, where there's not an agent doing anything. But I'm not convinced that we have an objective morality. I'm not convinced that such a thing does or could exist. But even, even if we only have subjective morality, that doesn't mean that it's all just anybody can do whatever they want. We have, as Shannon was pointing out, a basic description of what we would just define as morality. And morality isn't peanut butter. And there's no reasonable sense of morality where it's okay for me just to run around lopping off people's heads. Um, so to suggest that it all devolves into chaos is flatly wrong. I don't know if you play chess, but chess is a game that human beings invented. The rules have changed over the years to improve the game. And because of there are rules of the game that were arbitrary, but they are objective in that, you know, if you try to make a move that's illegal, it's still illegal. You don't, it's not a matter of opinion, but strategy on what, how to best proceed to avoid losing or to try to win there can be different opinions on that because we don't know what the right answer is. Chess isn't solved. But we can say when someone has made a move that has definitely lost them the game. And we can say when someone's made a move that has definitely won them the game. It's in the middle where things are fuzzy. But that doesn't mean that if somebody sits down to a table, they can just scoot four pieces forward all at once and claim victory. And I think it's silly for us to look at morality and say, oh, without a God or, oh, without, you know, this, it's just chaos because that's a lie. It's absolutely not chaos. Our understanding of how best to act and how to punish certain behaviors and reward others in order to build a society, we've been doing that for the entirety of human history. We stand on the shoulders of the people who came before us who figured out that, hey, you know what? If we allow people to enslave other people, I might wind up being a slave and that's a really bad thing. So let's get rid of that. If we allow people to run around, just shooting each other left and right, I could get shot. If we allow people just to take each other's stuff, well, what's the point in having property? Instead of following it down the slippery slope to catastrophe, look at the facts of reality, which is that we have built up a variety of moral systems that while they are all broken and imperfect, are not chaos. And we are not stuck going, well, if you say that it's moral to, you know, engage in female genital mutilation, then I just have to say, well, that's your opinion and there's nothing else to say about it. That's not true. You can say they're wrong. I agree. I, uh, I see the point that you're making and, and, uh, you know, I would like to, I guess, couch my mind and, and, and sit there, but you know, the questions that come up for me are, you know, we can say those things now, but it could have been that the Nazis won world war two. That could have. Well, okay. I think that you're losing, I think you're losing sight of what he's saying though. Like, if the, you're saying that people can just, what I'm hearing you say, if I'm understanding you correctly, is that you have this fear that if bad people have the brunt of the power, then they can kind of redefine what morality is and do bad stuff. But if we really understand what the word morality means, then we, we can see that in juxtaposition to that, what they're doing is in fact not moral, just definitionally, right? So... We, we can always have the fear, and which is why we should always strive to make a better society, that bad people might gain power and do bad things. But them being able to call it moral doesn't make any sense because the definition of the word moral would have to change. It would have to not be moral anymore. And, and right? It, it, I mean, it's, it, it could be that it does change. Like, for example, you know, I know it's not hypothetical, and I hate hypotheticals as much as anybody, but it, it, it kind of gets across the point. Let's suppose that World War II was more awful than it was, and it came down to where there were just two people alive, two human beings left alive. 
One of them, a Nazi camp commander with a gun, and the other one, a Jewish prisoner. There are no other human beings alive. Uh huh. In that scenario, someone saying the final solution is moral and good. Well, who who's right? But how? Do, you know? Because you and, and you the, analyze it based. I'm, I'm no, 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 one sec, Jason, Jason. You you analyze it based on what morality actually means, right? So it sounds to me like your fear is that bad people can do bad things and just redefine what words mean in order to justify doing it, which is what, that's what propaganda is, right? So th that being the case is plausible, right? It's plausible that people can propagandize the meaning of words to redefine them so that they can utilize that new meaning or a new understanding of that word or that term or that concept in order to justify what they're doing. So if that, that sounds like what you're saying, you're talking about definitions of terms. You're not talking about what is or isn't moral as you understand it now. Because if I asked you right now if that was moral, you, you would say, obviously it's not because my understanding of morality definitionally based on how I understand the concept tells me that that is not the moral thing to do. So you're going well, in, you're, actually, it's antithetical to your own individual position to say that that's moral. So you would have to admit that that's not moral, right? Your individual position based on your understanding of what morality is tells you that that's not moral. And the reason is because you understand what moral is. So your fear isn't that morality is subjective and that can, it can just fly off the rails. Your fear is that people can just redefine terms. Well, I, I guess I would have it's to. It's a linguistic you argument, me, not a philosophical one. Jason, if you ask in, me, in, in, Jason, in your hypothetical, when it, when it gets down to there's only two people left, are you the Nazi or the Jew? Um, I'd hope to be the Jew, but you know, I mean, okay. a lot of good people in Nazi Germany ended up becoming Nazis, and. You know, there, there's no. Well, thank you, Professor you Trump. Do when your society is going a certain direction. Goodbye. Goodbye. <sighs> there were good people on both sides, says Trump and Jason. See, the, the reason I ask in your scenario, your ridiculous, ridiculous scenario, where we get down to there's only two people left in the world with diametrically opposed views. Ha ha ha. How do you know what morality is? You do it by listening to fucking Shannon. And that is morality has a definition that does not give a fuck whether there's two Nazis left alive, one Nazi left alive, zero Nazis left alive. It is what it is. Definitionally, if we care about the betterment of the world, killing the Jews is not the way to do it. The Nazis are just fucking wrong. It doesn't matter that whether they won. It doesn't matter how many guns they had. It doesn't matter that they end up in that position. What you're afraid of is not that morality as shannon pointed out is somehow failing but that some people might do what they want irrespective of what's moral right. and that's a real question but the way to combat that is to educate them on what morality is and to show how they are in 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 conflict with the foundations of that morality but i'm not going to sit here and do the well there were some good people who became nazis well there were there are good people who've done all kinds of things but once you become a nazi you're no longer a good person Certainly not moral.